Hello everyone, welcome to WowCast episode 2. I'm your host Bethany Stout and today we're going to talk about Aberyst the Shattered Crucible and with us are two amazing people on the RAID design team. Please introduce yourselves. Hi there, I'm Steve Crow, and I'm principal artist on the Dungeon Art team. And I'm Mike Nithals, I'm the lead encounter designer. What does an encounter designer do? It's a great question. So we have a kind of an adage on the team that encounter design is telling stories by punching players in the nose. Oh, so we that. make all of the <laughs> monsters and, and creature abilities that players get to interact with as they are playing World of Warcraft. And Steve, what does a dungeon artist do? Well, dungeon artists <laughs> basically build buildings, not from uh, bricks and mortar, but we build them from polygons. And uh, part of what we do is we build mainly all the large architecture that you see in World of Warcraft, including cities, buildings, as well as the interiors for dungeons and raids. So Aberyst the Shadow Crucible just launched. Can you tell me about what lies within the raid? What's it about? For sure. Aberyst is Naltharian's secret lair, and it is under the Dragon Isles in the Zeralek Caverns. This is where Naltharian was able to kind of experiment out of the prying eyes of the other aspects. He could kind of delve into secrets maybe he should not be digging into. What's it like to design a raid from the ground up? Yeah, when we kind of approach raid design, we are thinking a lot about, you know, what are the stories we want to tell? What are the different creatures we want to see here? And, and you know, who's our main villain? And how can we kind of tell the story of the raid through the, the combat mechanics the players are going to experience? So we're always thinking about how can we tell our story through what's happening to the players? Well, from an art standpoint, we really wanted to support the de designers with the story they were trying to tell, um, and we really wanted to play up the whole laboratory theme. In Netherius, you'd seen a little bit of uh, where Netherian had been experimenting in one of the rooms, but this time we wanted to really bring that to the fore. With Netherian as well, we had the opportunity to go back in time and see what it was like for him when he was still an aspect. So we tried to tell that visually as an overall picture for, um, for Aberus is we started off with very traditional sort of black dragon style architecture in the first half of the raid. And then this slowly changes over time to the final boss where things become more chaotic. It mirrors what's going on with Netherian as you pass through the raid, you're sort of going on a journey with him as he hears the whispers of the old gods and starts to turn to, you know, to the dark side, basically. Um, I wonder, Mike, what do you do when you first start on a raid? What's the most important thing from design that you're looking to do? It all starts out with uh, kind of conversations with our narrative designers about like, hey, where's the story going? What are the beats we want to hit in the, in the raid? And who's going to be the end boss? And from there, we can kind of start thinking about where we want this to take place. Who might else be in the raid? What are the other bosses going to be? Who are the characters who might be coming with us and having their stories be told through the raid as well? In Aberyst, we really wanted to focus on kind of this tale of Sarkareth and Naltharian's legacy. And not only how it affects the Drakthir, but also how it's affecting the Black Dragonflight, Sibelian and Rathian. And from there, we kind of bring in Steve's team once we start talking about like, Hey, what's the space going to be? What's it going to look like? What are we, where are we going to go through? What are the different rooms we're going to see? And, and, and then once we kind of start jamming about rooms and what the, what the space is, we start thinking about, okay, we want to do this nod to uh, the Elementium plates that our buddy Deathwing here <laughs> is going to eventually fuse into them. Like, so what's the prototype there, right? And, you know, Shadowflame is a big part of the, of the Black Dragonflight. So what if we did like a boss where like we show the experimentation, the development of Shadowflame and, and almost kind of most importantly, we have this encounter called the Forgotten Experiments, this drag there, this super soldier that they can use to like defend against the primal dragon. So it's kind of just an opportunity for us to like look at these different rooms and kind of identify little stories, little bits of the whole like black dragon story that we can kind of tell through combat mechanics and, and visual storytelling. Yes, absolutely. When, you know, when we come to look at it visually, as artists, we're looking at it visually. We let the designers do their thing, they do the designing, and um, we sit in on the early meetings, so we do um, interject into their ideas, and sometimes we just sit there in their meetings and they have blue sky meetings with really crazy ideas, and we just go, okay, they'll figure this out. And then eventually they come to a point where they um, have figured out what bosses are going to be in the raid. They, can, they figured out a basic raid layout, which would be a 2D map. And then from that, we build what we call it, a gray box, which is a three-dimensional representation of that. So a boss room might be as simple as just an interior of a cube 
generally we we put more in it than that. You know, there's going to be the. You know, I'm trying to think of a cube room. <laughs> yeah, it's like just like just a just a cube room. But no, generally we, we you know we might put tanks in if it's you know the you know the experiments and that, so that you get some idea. And we start very very basic, and then design will look at that. And the the important thing is here, all the art we do is actually in game. So you're actually playing as a player, walking around in this big grey box world that represents the, the raid. So mm -hmm. we would make the big central chamber that we have in Aberus and that you can walk around the sides, you can see it all, you can look down. We'll start to put in basic lighting and then we'll have everybody on the team, like the designers, then start walking through that process. So tell yeah. Mike yeah. What, what happens. We hand you back the gray box <laughs> that from your 2D design, and then what's the process yeah, from there? Yeah, so our, our raid point person, so the person responsible for kind of like layering in all of the, the kind of the raid systems, uh, they do a runtime test to make sure the space is feeling like it's the right size. They'll do a, a temporary spawning pass where we'll put creatures in, just so that we can kind of get a sense of like how big the space is. Well, like we might spawn like a giant dragon and a, a smaller creature or like a humanoid sized creature so we can kind of get the sense of scale. So that when we go back to having conversations with the artists, we could say, okay, we need to either shrink it down or widen spaces a little bit. This hallway's a little narrow, this, this staircase is a little steep type of thing. And we can have those conversations to iterate on the gray box once we kind of have that all kind of in place. Yes, absolutely. Then that is where we like to make the biggest sort of edits at that point because we haven't really invested too much in. This is the time when we say, is this boss room the right size? Do we really want to have such a long corridor between this boss and the next boss? Can we shorten it? How, how do we massage the whole um, layout, the whole architectural interior space so that it will feel tight to the players and the right sort of pacing? And while that's happening, and the designers are probably working on other things. We also start to create concept art for the raid, and then our concept artists will start to take that mood and the things we're trying to tell and the story, and they might sometimes use the gray box. We'll actually do a screenshot of the gray box, and they would uh, paint over it, and actually we did that, I think, in Avarice, or I think I comped up something. I have a really good example in Abras where we did a bit of that um, editing in Greybox. So the, the artists had built out the layout in, in, in Greybox. We were going to have two exterior spaces kind of open to the Zerla Caverns. We wanted to make sure that players were going to have like a different experience depending on which wing they were going to go to. So we actually iterated on, that, on the experiments wing, which was going to be much more exterior. We actually made it an interior and made it like a much more of a laboratory where like we could have these canisters and things so that we, the players could go one direction and have one experience and then go another direction and have a completely different visual experience. That was an important choice. At first when I think we made that choice, I thought, oh, are we taking anything away here? But looking at the final result, it's a much better experience, I think. Is there any particular parts in Abra that has become your guys' favorite? I think, uh, I think one of my favorite parts um, in that chamber, so you walk, you, you, you finish the first boss, and then you walk out in that chamber, and you look up, and there's a huge sort of dragon skeleton, or it could be a, a statue, and it's ominous. And then you walk a little further, and you can look down into this lava pit, and then you see that the wings go off and left and right, and there's doors. And so that overall big room just sort of sets the stage. We wanted it to be epic. We wanted it to feel big. It um, feels epic. <laughs> and, and, and we have new technology that allows us to put a lot more detail into a, a huge room like that, which is great. I wanted to focus on making sure it was interesting from every angle. And one of the things I really sort of, I don't know whose idea it was, but like to have the broken tanks on one side and the shadow flame stuff. And it sort of tells the story of like, what's going on here? What could have escaped from these huge tanks? It's, a, it's sort of fun stuff like that we get to do as artists. It's, it's really interesting because, you know, sometimes in, some encounters are, you know, we have to, we want to tell the story of Sarkarath, right? So we know Sarkarath is going to be a boss. But sometimes we're like, oh, what, we kind of like, here we have this room and Steve's team runs with it. And they come up with this awesome idea and we're like, we gotta find something cool to live here, <laughs> right? Like some awesome boss needs to live in this space. And that's how you get stuff like Magmarax because you know, art informs our decisions too. It's, a, it's really a two way street. It, it is funny how a basic design gives us an idea. We, we get a different idea 
from maybe what the designers were thinking. We have these meetings and they just get so excited about sometimes the art we make and then they'll think, well, how can we incorporate? How, well, let's change our design or this has given us another idea for, for how the gameplay in this area can work. And it's funny how these things sort of just happen naturally when we're working together. Yeah, the team saw the model for an Altharian and we're like, I want to fight an Altharian. That thing looks so cool. So it was the concept artists who really informed us and we're like, oh, how can we fit Neltharian into the story, and we were able to find a really elegant way, I think, of, of bringing that, yes. that, that creature to life. For the end bosses, there's always some major lead up. Can you go more into depth about how someone like Sarkareth gets created into an encounter? Yeah, it really is a, like a multidisciplinary kind of project. It's, you know, we kind of the idea that we're going to have Sarkareth as our end boss. We really want to, like, delve into kind of this uh, Neltharian's legacy, I'll say, and how he kind of uh, approaches that and um, is consumed by it. And it's, you know, the encounter design team to kind of build the mechanics and what the moment to moment the players are going to experience is. Steve's team to kind of build the space and, and give us that visual storytelling. We have effects artists who get involved and they, they create all new visuals for us to communicate the gameplay to our players and to like sell the fantasy. Our narrative and cinematics team are involved to make sure we're, we're aligned on like what the story we want to tell is. So it really is a big team effort as yeah. we get into building an emboss. And art-wise, we always approach the end boss as a very special part in the game. So we put a lot of effort into making that room look epic. But when it comes to the end boss in Avarice, we definitely didn't want to, we started to uh, change up the art towards the end boss, sort of telling the story of how Neltharian is sort of starting to slowly hear the god whispers, and we we try to reflect that in the art in the artwork, and so it becomes a little bit more chaotic. I don't want to spoil it too much; if players <laughs> haven't got there yet. But you know, it becomes more chaotic, and it's, it becomes a different art style. So they they see something new at the end, and we really want to build up to that epic moment at the end for the, the last boss. I think Steve Keaton does something right there that I think is really important as we look at and think about raids. Is we want to have this sense of like a journey through the raid. Yeah. We want to have kind of different moments the players have. They have that, like, like Steve describes, this nice shot of the dragon. But then we can kind of go into this experiment swing. It has a very different feel. It's canisters and jars and experiments. Then you kind of go out onto the battlements and it's the Jardin attacking up over the walls. And you kind of come down into Magmarax's pit and it gets all like the, the lava and fire. We just want to make sure that the players are kind of having this like epic adventure as they mm. go through the, the, the raid space. It definitely portrays as an epic adventure. It is so vast inside. You just, there's a lot to take in, and I love that, that everything is different when you move to different rooms. I think an, also an awesome thing that we do is that we stopped putting the final boss on the PTR. How is that going for you? Do you like the surprise? And can you tell us more about how important the player feedback is with the PTR? Uh, yeah, I think I'll touch on that second part first. <laughs> yeah. I, the, the, the PTR, um, is so invaluable to us. It's our opportunity to get, have the community give feedback on these encounters. And there's been a lot of examples um, in the past, like for example, um, Halandris was an encounter we put on PTR with a certain set of mechanics. And based on feedback, we iterated to what we saw go live in uh, Sepulchre of the First Ones. So it's, it's really important that the community feel like empowered to like give, the, give us, the designers, this feedback because we really do run with it. And it's really something that like, we're really passionately checking like YouTube videos and, and Twitch clips and like just trying to get everyone's kind of sense about where these kind of encounters are landing because we want to make sure that we're, we're, we're making them happy. Like ultimately at the end of the day, we want our players to have a great time you know, killing raid bosses uh, is also very cool to touch on the first part of your question, <laughs> to see players experience something for the first time so in, in, a, in the raid, right? And, and be able to have that like, wow moment of like, oh, that's really cool. And like to see some of the visuals that come together at the end. So it's, it's really cool. I, I, you know, we want to temper that with getting community feedback, mm -hmm. but I think it's a really awesome opportunity to see like our players be really wowed by what we're working on. So for something like Scarn, we uh, listened to some of this feedback from PTR and, um, I changed the look of the floor. It was going to be red with gold trim uh, scales for the dragon scales on the floor, but 
all the effects were red, they were all sort of fire effects that Scum throws out with the traps. And so we were getting feedback saying, you know, there's a lot of red effects and that. So I changed it completely up and made it stone. Well, I think it was on Saturday. I was thinking, oh, you know, let me just try and repaint this. Got out Photoshop and an hour I quickly painted over the texture and looked at it and showed it to everybody Monday morning. And everyone said, oh yeah, that looks better. We don't want our art to get in the way. We want our art to enhance things, but not get in the way. Speaking of Holandris and Sepulchre, the first ones, what have we learned, taken from that fight, and have brought forth into our future raids in Dragonflight? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. You know, one of the things we think about when we're looking back at previous raids, what do, we, like, what do we want to improve on? How do we want to evolve the craft of making bosses? Is thinking about some points of challenge and difficulty <laughs> that that encounter may have uh, may have had, just and a just a, yeah, it was <laughs> you know it was a really cool and epic encounter, oh, yeah. but. But there was a lot of single points of failure, I would say. Like, uh, I blow up and my whole raid blows up. Yes, right? And, yes. Uh, you know, there are points where that kind of mechanic is absolutely appropriate. So we wanted to kind of take a look and see, like, where do we want to be using those types of mechanics in the future? And, and how do we kind of, like, make the raids a little more feel appropriate for the different difficulties that we do have? Because we make, there's a lot of conscious thought that goes into... Um, what's appropriate for LFR versus what would be great for Race to World First Raiders in Mythic mode, right? So we have, to, we have that whole spectrum we're thinking of. Has the art team learned any lessons in the past? Um, just, uh, I know since we did Sanctum of Domination, I think in that particular raid we learned some things where with the block out, we, we start off with a block out and we try to work out where everything's gonna be. And there was this area where it's a little bit tight and we sort of went with it but it kind of caused us quite a lot of pain because the designers came along and said we had this corridor and they wanted to put swinging axes in it and it was already really tight up against the other two rooms either side and then the swinging axes were sort of swinging into the other room and you could see them. <laughs> we massaged it and we, we fixed it but one of the things I think we learned is let's, if we're going to cut things or we're going to change the layout let's do it early. With the Avarice um, it was a sort of a mirrored where there was battlements on both sides. And we, we looked at it and we said, didn't we? I think you know, design looked at it with art. And we, we said, well, well, let's cut a bit out, but make it different. And that will give the players a more interesting path left and right. And we do stuff like that. It's like editing a movie. No one wants to sit through an eight hour long movie. We, we edit things to give a tighter experience, more fun experience for our players. So that's one of the things we, we've learned recently. When you're designing a raid from the beginning, do you design it from mythic difficulty and all of the abilities or and pare it down? Or do you start from normal? Where, where, how do you start? As uh, the encounter design team approaches bosses, when uh, we send out kind of our first draft of our paper design, we send them out as, uh, we kind of approach it from the heroic difficulty first. Uh, we do that because we think that we can get a good kind of baseline for what the mechanics of the encounter are going to be. It's kind of this, the holistic view of the encounter. And then we can kind of have our internal raid group play test that fight and we could kind of tweak things about and see like kind of what 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 they're keying off of and what what they're enjoying and kind of like twisting those mechanics to make mythic and then you know taking other mechanics that might be overly punishing and inappropriate for normal or LFR and make those appropriate for those difficulties. Sometimes when an encounter gets uh, into testing mode where we're finally having our uh, QA raid group take a look at it that they um, they find it a little challenging. We call that accidentally a mythicking, um, where you kind of you kind of shoot a little too high. So you know you've already got your mythic fight done at that point, and you can worry about all the other difficulties after that. So it's a lot of fun to kind of see because they're our first opportunity to see our fights in action. So we recently announced the ten point two raid in our um, in our roadmap. Is there any little hints or anything? Can you give us or? Yeah, you could say no. I'm just trying. I'm trying for everybody. I'm trying yeah. for you guys. I could say we are hard at work uh, bringing ten, the 10.2 the <laughs> ray to our players. No, I know the art team is very hard at work. I'm really excited um, what we've got going so far on it. It's uh, we've got a great team working on it, and uh, no pressure that now it's been announced that. Yeah, they're, they're now you deliver. have the, the clock ticking now. <laughs> the clock's ticking. Yes. Uh, so, I think I think our players are going to like it. Thank you, Mike and Steve, for hanging out and talking about Avarice, the Shadowed Crucible, and the raid design process. And thank you, viewers, for watching. If you have any feedback, please let us know. My name is Bethany Stout, and stay tuned for the next WOWcast.